Joan, America's favorite comedy show, starring America's queen of comedy, Joan Davis, as Mrs. Joan Stevens. And featuring Jim Backus as Judge Bradley Stevens. Brad, what millionaire playboy has been seen at what nightclub every night this past week? Is the answer a dancer? Does he linger for a singer? Or could it be the hat check girl who has gone to his head? <laughs> hat check girl gone to his head. <laughs> Isn't that a right, Brad? Shelly, how can you read such nonsense? Oh, Brad, stop being such a stuffed shirt. The fellow who writes this talk of the town column is very funny. And he really gives you the latest dirt, too. Dirt is right. Just a collection of phony news items. Oh, uh, Joni, can I have some more toast? And uh, please hurry, dear. I'm a little late for court. Yes, Your Honor. Coming right up. <laughs> Rumors are flying that not all the cases in this town's court are being decided on merit alone. We know that bribe is an ugly word, but can there be some bulging wallets under those judicial robes? <laughs> Please, Brad, I, I got the toast as fast as I could. Well, I, I'm sorry, dear. I was, I was thinking of, of something else. Oh. Can I have the paper back, Brad? Courts are being decided on merit alone. Brad? Bulging wallets under those judicial robes. You see, honey, that talk of the town column really grows on you. Well, enjoy yourself. Read it. And I'll read the magazine section. I didn't get a chance to read it yesterday. Ooh. Well, how about this? Helen Cavanaugh's house is in the home of the week section. The nerve of this newspaper. No, oh, it would be Helen Cavanaugh's house. Well, that Helen is one of the most arrogant, insulting. Like when she said to me, Darling, your stockings are wrinkled. I wasn't even wearing stockings at the time. <laughs> home of the week. They, they shouldn't be allowed to print this kind of news. They certainly shouldn't. We should be talking about this for years. I'm surprised she hasn't been here yet to brag about it. I can just hear her. And guess what, darling? They picked my house for the home of the week. Isn't that wonderful, darling? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, dear, if you, if you like it, keep it. Uh, don't send it back. I'll, I'll, I'll pay for it, dear. Please, dear. Like the <laughs> Oh, Johnny. Helen. Helen Cavanaugh. Well, what brings you here? I was on my way to the beauty parlor, and I suddenly said to myself, Helen, you must drop in on Joni. And you answered, oh, why not, Helen? It's only three miles out of my way. <laughs> well, I nearly dropped in to say hello. Okay, go ahead, say it. Hello. Oh, Joni, you and your wonderful sense of humor. You're always kidding. <laughs> Well, I uh, guess I'd better be going. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, Joni. Here it comes. <laughs> Did you happen to see the Rotogravure section of Sunday's Gazette? No, Helen. I didn't happen to see the Rotogravure section of Sunday's Gazette. Why? Well, they did the silliest thing. They picked out my house for their weekly feature as Home of the Week. Is that so? Well, too bad I missed it. Oh, I just may have a copy here with me. I bet my life you have. Well, what do you know? I do have a copy. Imagine that! <laughs> you know, ever since they redecorated my home, they've been clamoring for me to have them photograph it. And finally, I just had to give in. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Cavanaugh. Hello, Beverly. 
You see, Joan, the beautiful California home of Mr. and Mrs. Philip L. Cavanaugh. Mm. Late Louis XV furniture, hand-cut Czechoslovakian crystal, Swedish silver. How do you like it, Joni? Well, I think that plant there needs watering. Looks a little droopy. <laughs> oh, it's just that you're so sensitive on the subject of houses. What? And you really shouldn't be. Why, you have a charming house. It's so, um... So, uh... Um, well, I happen to like it. So do I. Oh, and so do I. Why, Joni, you have done miracles with this house. The very lack of plan is almost a plan in itself. Oh, what period did you say it is? Early miscellaneous. <laughs> well, the latest style, the mixed periods. Oh, and you have, haven't you? For your information, Helen Cavanaugh, the Sunday Gazette has been begging me for months to let them photograph my home for the home of the week. But I turned them down every time, didn't I, Bev? Uh, sure, sure you did. I know what, Joni. If it's true as you say that they want to use your home, prove it. Go on, let them. No, I wouldn't even... Go on, Joni. Call up the Gazette and tell them that you accept their offer. If you dare. Okay, I will. <laughs> I forgot the number. I'll write him a letter sometime. I know the number. <laughs> Ask for the rotogravure section. Give me the rotogravure section, please. Rotogravure, color speaking. Oh, this is Mrs. Bradley J. Stevens. Say your office has been bothering me for such a long time to use my home in your Sunday edition, and I've decided to let you. But you'll have to do it immediately. Just a minute, Mrs. Stevens. We only... I'm sorry if you can't do it within the hour. You'll simply have to forget about it. Well, what do you think now? I never would have believed it. <laughs> I know why they want pictures of your home. For their believe it or not, Colin. <laughs> well, I've got to be running, Joni. I don't want to be late for my beauty appointment. Oh, no, don't be late. They'll need all the time they can get. Quick! <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the look on her face when she went out the door? Oh, the old show-off. She is real. Yeah. <laughs> Say. Wouldn't it be funny if the Gazette really did decide to photograph this place? Funny? It'd be tragic. There it is. Bradley J. Stevens, the only one in the book. That must be the judge. Judge Stevens. I don't remember contacting his wife, but from the way she spoke, her home must be a real show place. Well, maybe the chief contacted her himself. That's very possible. Still better cancel the layout of the McBride mansion this week. We're going to do the Stevens place, okay? You know something, Bev? I, I wouldn't change this place for a palace. I mean it. Let's face it, this is not home of the week material, this place. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Goodbye. They're coming right over. They're coming right over? Tell me, who's coming? Well, the newspaper men from the Gazette. I gotta stop them. The G A Z Z. No, Tony, that's not the number. Well, what was the number? Crescent for it. Oh, what's the use? They'd be gone anyway. They said they were coming right over, Bev. Well, I do. Well, let's just straighten things up and make the best of it. I guess that's all I. Oh, what good is it? Helen is right. If I only had another lamp. Say, maybe you could borrow Catherine Cooper's Dresden lamp. I could run over and get it. You know how gorgeous it is. Yeah, it's nicer than any lamp that Helen Cavanaugh has got. See, and while you're on your way, you could borrow Marilyn Haddock's Claude's a cigarette box. It'll look good on that table. Your friends will be glad to help you out, Joni. And I'll bet that Mae Richards would let me have her gilt antique mirror instead of this one. And that beautiful fire screen you're always admiring. Yeah, and, and I could even get Ruth Morgan's jade figures instead of these. Oh, Joni, those jade figures are a family heirloom. They're worth more than this whole house. Oh, so what, honey? I'm only going to borrow them for an hour. Uh, look how impressive they'll be. Can you just visualize them up there? Well, if that's the case, you might as well ask Louise Dugan to lend you her Gainsborough painting. What? Borrow her Gainsborough that her millionaire uncle left her? I'll do it. <laughs> Hurry, Joni, I think I hear them coming. Okay, okay, this is the last piece. Oh, 
Stevens? Oh, yes, you're the gentleman from the Gazette, I suppose. Well, that's right, I'm Mr. Kellner, and this is my associate, Mr. Murphy. How do you, you do? do? Uh, this is my social secretary, Miss Beverly. Pleased to meet you. Uh, how'd you do? <laughs> this is a very unusual room, Mr. Stevens, but interesting. Very... Gainsborough. Genuine Gainsborough. Oh, naturally. <laughs> Jade. Hand-carved Jade. A matched pair. Beautiful, beautiful pair. And you're the wife of Judge Bradley J. Stevens, correct? Oh, well, that's right. I suppose all these priceless things have been in yours and the judge's family for years? No, just recently acquired. <laughs> Magnificent piece. Magnificent. A Ming vase. Mr. Stevens, I must compliment you on what you've done with the decor of this room. Well, it takes a heap of borrowing. I mean, living to make a house a home. Living. That's exactly it. That's the keynote of your home. Warmth, hospitality. You can tell just by looking at this room that you've got a lot of friends. You can notice that, huh? And the wonderful thing is the way you've successfully mixed inexpensive yet tasteful furnishings with items of exquisite rareness. That painting, for instance. It belongs here. Don't tell that to Louise Dugan. What's that? Who's Louise Dugan? Oh, uh, she's the girl in the picture. <laughs> she and Gainsey had quite a thing going at one time. <laughs> well, Mrs. Stevens, I think we've enough material for your story. Well, I'm glad. Your home will be in next Sunday's Gazette. Fine. Goodbye. Come on, Joe. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Psh. Well, come on. Let's get these things back to the rightful owner. <laughs> Hello, Fred. Have you seen Talk of the Town in the late edition? You haven't? Well, get set for a shock. As was itemed in this column earlier, the judges in our fair city have evident signs of sticky fingers. We now have information that one of these gentlemen surrounds himself at home with treasures of museum piece value, including such items as an original Gainsborough, a mean vase, and a pair of carved jade figures, a neat trick on a judge's salary. Where does all that money come from, Your Honor? Or should I say, dishonor? No, no, they don't name the judge. No, I, I agree with you, Fred. I've already called the district attorney and the chief of the police, and I'm calling a meeting at my home with Hammond and Roberts. Well, if there is a judge with such stuff in his home, I say let's do everything in our power to put him behind bars. <laughs> but he must have some proof this time, or, or else he wouldn't make these specific charges. Like naming the actual articles in the judge's house the way that he did. Yeah. I agree with Brad. He's not speaking in general. No, is he not? is not. May I you, see that? You certainly. Uh, cookies, Judge? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Uh, Joni. No, uh, Joni, cookies. cookies. No, no, dear, we're talking. You understand? Exactly what you propose, Brad. Well, I say that we ought to find out who the guilty judge is and then clean house ourselves. Right, right. Exactly. You mean there's a crooked judge in this town? Well, <laughs> those are the accusations, dear. Well, I think that's disgraceful. Uh, yes, dear, we'll take care of it. And, gentlemen, Whoever that judge is, we ought to have him removed from the bench at once. Right. Removed from the bench? Why, they ought to fine him $100,000, put him in jail for 20 years, and then when he gets out, yes. maybe it, give him a trial. Yes, I know, well, John. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's very clear. Hello. Hello, Mr. Stevens. This is Albert Kellner over at the Daily Gazette. I wonder if we could get a few more pictures of your house. Uh, pictures? Uh, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Kellner, but that would be very impossible now. We'd hardly take any time at all, Mrs. Stevens. Don't take no for an answer. I hate to insist, Mrs. Stevens, but we only need a couple of shots. We'll be there right away. Boy, if we can crack this case, there'll be a big bonus in it for both of us. And promotions, too. Uh, hello? Hello? Oh, my gosh, I guess he can. They're on their way. And so am I. I'll go borrow that stuff back. You just make sure you get the judges out of the living room. <laughs> Furthermore, it will stop the papers from taking cracks at judges in general. And then we'll draw up a statement for the press 
explaining precisely where we stand. That's, That's exactly what we should do, because if you yes. wait and... Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, yes, yes, Joan. I, I hate to interrupt, dear, but there's a leak in the faucet. But, a faucet? But, dear, this is an important meeting. We yes, have a very... You, you know how helpless I am at those sort of things, and Brad is so handy with tools, he'll have it fixed in the jiffy. Well, yes. But, Joan, I, I can't. I have to... Well, okay, if you don't want to help me, I'll get the mop in the bucket. Do you remember the last time the flood, the waves were... Coming? Well, all, all right, Joan, all right. I'll, I'll fix it for her. I'll just woman. I'll, I'll be right back. It's, I'm sure it's nothing serious. Right there, Brad. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, well, well, it's, it's uh, just a washer, that's all. I'll uh, get the pliers. Oh, uh, you men, you're just so wonderful. You get to the root of the problem right away. Oh, there we are. <laughs> So we must stand together in this matter to show that we're all beyond suspicion. Right here, there. Yeah. Oh, Judge Henderson, yes. uh, Brad's having a little trouble with the uh, faucet. I wonder if you'd give him a hand. Of course, I always fix things around the house for Mrs. Henderson. Excuse me, gentlemen. Nothing complicated about a leaky faucet. It's right there, Judge. Brad, I don't think you should be turning the whole faucet. No, no, look, Judge, I've, I've done this before. So have I. The first thing to do is to get at the master control. Now you're getting someplace. You'll have it fixed in no time. By the way, uh, where is the master control? Well, I, uh, I think it's, uh, under here. Oh. <laughs> And I think that as private citizens, we should bring suit at once. Well, personally, oh, excuse I... Excuse me, Judge Hammond. Oh, yes, Mrs. Stevens. Uh, Brad and, uh, and Judge Henderson are having a little problem with the sink, and I was wondering oh, if you... Oh, well, I'd be, I'd be glad to help. My <laughs> wife considers me quite handy around the house. Oh, sure she does. Yes, it's right there. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, uh, uh, Brad, Brad, now that's the, that's the wrong way to go about it there. No, 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 we're getting it. It's just... You have to take the faucet handle off the fitting here. <laughs> Right that way. Ah, oh, a plumbing problem. Have you turned off the water, Brad? No, no, it's very, it just needs a wash. But you've got to turn the water off first. No, oh, don't turn the water off. Oh, no. Oh! Okay. Okay. Up the steps. Oh. Okay. Well, that's fine. That is you in there, isn't it? Yeah. Right over here, Pat. She's a good girl. Here, let me take the lamp. Uh, 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 oh, God. Right with you, honey. Oh, the thing. Yeah. Oh, oh, the name almost went big. Listen, did you forget the fire screen? And it, but, oh, oh, that's great, that's great. Oh, Hello, Mrs. Stevens. How do you do? How do you do? Thanks. We'll just take a minute. The editor wants a few close-ups of some of your treasures. Well, help yourself. There they are, just where they were before. Well, of course. Where else would they be? <laughs> of course, where else would they be, buddy? Now, I tell you, Brad, you're going about this all wrong. Well, just hand me that stoop spread. Oh, there we are. Your hall must have really made an impression on the editor. He wants a close-up of that Gainsborough, Joe. Yes. <laughs> well, that certainly is very sweet of your editor. And a better shot of that Ming vase. A uh, vase. Oh, the vase? Vase. And the Dresden leg. Genuine Dresden, of course. Well, naturally. <laughs> Here, let me have it. I'll get it. Well, I guess that about does it. Yes, I think that should do it. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, how about these carved figures? Uh, the real jade, emerald trim. Oh, yes, we must get those. <laughs> Oh, and uh, this cloisonne box in labored mother of pearl. Cloisonne? Yes. yes. Let's see. Um, oh, there's no sense in bothering with that candy dish. It's just plain gold. Gold? Well, yeah, we'll get that gold. What? Is this doing anything? Yes! It's deafening me! <laughs> well, I guess the editor's got everything he needs. I'm sure he does. Thank you so much for your trouble. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Stevens. Goodbye. Thank you, Mrs. Stevens. Goodbye. Nice paper, that gazette. Oh, I forgot about the judges. Step number one, we issue a public statement. Uh, couched in the strongest language that states clearly, as soon as we learn the identity of the judge whose home contains an original Gainsborough, a Ming vase, genuine jade articles, and other objects of antique value. <laughs> and ask for his immediate removal from the bench and a criminal suit which could result in five to ten years in jail.
Excuse me, Brad, uh, but what'd you say before? Uh, I said five to ten years in jail. No, dear, about, about a judge's house. Oh, oh, well, yes, dear, it's, uh, it's all in the paper here. Uh, why don't you read, read it for yourself, honey? Hmm? I'm... Now. An original Gaines firm. Oh. Gaines, yeah, that's Gaines. <laughs> Dressed and when? Ming vase. <laughs> what do I do with my old furnishings? Beverly, Beverly, come down right away. Bev, come here, Bev. <laughs> Beverly, you gotta put the old furnishings right back, honey. Okay, but I'm not wearing the new stuff. Okay, honey. <laughs> Get all the stuff back in here. This is a real emergency. Okay. And therefore, we, gentlemen, and we've done it. We've stopped the leak. <laughs> well, I guess that about does it. And if Brad agrees to draw up a public statement, we can adjourn our meeting right now. We have had a busy day. We certainly have. We fixed the leaky faucet, and we're going to fix something else. The Gazette's wagon. <laughs> On the list, we find that there actually is a judge who is guilty of their accusations. <laughs> well, we've uh, achieved our purpose. It's uh, been time well spent. I'm glad you call this meeting, Brad. So am I. I expect our statement will do a lot to restore public confidence. Yes. Well, I, I certainly hope so. I'll uh, get your hats, gentlemen. Right. Hats? <laughs> I'll get it, Brad. <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> She's a section that you know. Yes, I think that's my hat. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, Joan, here, here, let no, me do no, that. No, please, them. please, oh, I'll get them. Gentlemen, I'll get them. Oh, Ming. Ming. Dresden. Well, we know who the hats belong to, but which one of you gentlemen checked the rest of this stuff with us? <laughs> Now listen to what the talk of the town column has to say. Listen, Joni. Our humblest apologies to the town's judges. The hot tip we had suddenly turned cold, and a complete investigation of our legal eagles showed this reporter to be 100% wrong. <laughs> our humblest apologies. <laughs> you know, it's a good thing that Helen Cavanaugh passed by with those pictures of her house. I wonder who that can be. Good evening, darling. Hello, Brad. Hello. Helen, uh, I have a very pleasant surprise for you. What? Well, I'm pretty friendly with the boys in Rotogreviewer at the Gazette, and they gave me a sample of next week's Home of the Week section. With pictures of my place in it? Yes, darling, and they're just lovely. And I even supplied them with some helpful information. Oh, gee, the pictures are beautiful. I thought you'd like them. Well, goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Brad. Yeah, goodbye, Ellen. Well, thanks a million. Oh, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> well, Brad, how about that Helen Cavanaugh? Bringing us an advanced copy of our house for the paper. And, Joni, you keep saying that Helen is a nasty girl. I know. I oh. guess I was wrong. <laughs> I, uh... Oh, no. What is it, Joan? Well, she supplied them with some extra information, all right. Mm -hmm. Above is the beautiful living room in the home of Mr. and Mrs. Bradley J. Stevens, Gainsborough painting through the courtesy of Louise Dugan. Dressed in lamp from the home of Catherine Cooper. Carved jade figures loaned by Ruth Morgan. Now, 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 wait a minute, Joan. Don't you see, under these circumstances, it's a good thing Helen made them print that information. I know her, and she wasn't trying to help us. But just the same she did. As a matter of fact, we owe her a debt of gratitude. Oh, sure. Why don't we give her a medal? <laughs> Say, that's a good idea. We'll give her a medal. I've always wanted to hang one on her. <laughs> Why, I like to. <laughs> Oh, my love is fine, but I'm white. Do you get it?
all day she keeps my heart passing, never know where her brain has gone. To reach his arms, and be my life why I marry John. To reach his arms, and be my life why I 